All right. So today we have as Judge Fletcher uh -huh. from Texas, um, a favorite of the law tube community. And um, I'm so excited to have you on today. So for those Thank of you, for those who have not met you yet, can you introduce yourself and tell a little bit about how you got where you are? Um, my name is David Fleischer. I am the current judge of Harris County Criminal Court at Law Number 5. It is one of 16 criminal courts in Harris County. We handle the um, misdemeanors here in Harris County where if it's punishable by up to six months or a year in jail, you will come to us. And, you know, we handle everything from, you know, DWIs, deadly conduct, criminal trespass, um, assault on a family member, garden variety assaults. We handle uh, quite a variety of cases. And um, I practiced for about 17, 18 years criminal defense before I became a judge. And uh, the reason I did it was to change things because things were in a way where they weren't very favorable for defendants. And I wanted to do something about it. And it has really hit me in, in a lot of ways, you know. Um, I took a big pay cut doing this. So uh, it's not about the money, right? Because I was making, you know, double as as defense lawyer as I am now making a judge. So we took, you know, at, at the very minimum, conservatively a 50% pay cut, you know, being becoming a judge. But, you know, the idea that we got we did it is to change things and and we've done it you know we bail reform um and i don't know if you're familiar with bail reform you know we when we got elected we were thrust into a lawsuit where we got sued because the way that it used to be and and i don't know if the law to community knows this but you know prior to 2018 if you were arrested for an offense there were no pr bonds they were virtually non-existent if you got arrested, you were given a bond and you were put into jail. No one, virtually no one got PR bonds. It took for a lady to file a lawsuit. She was charged with driving on a suspended license. Her bond, because she had had a, I, I want to say she had one prior. And as a result, her bond was set at, it was either 2,500 or 5,000. She couldn't pay the bond. So essentially she was stuck in jail. She lost her bond, lost her job, lost her apartment. So she filed a lawsuit saying, hey, look, it's not fair, right? You know, I'm in jail. I can't post a bond. Why do I have to sit here in jail? I'm, I'm not a violent person. I'm going to show up. You know, give me a PR bond. Back in the day, it didn't happen. So we agreed to the lawsuit, agreed to the fact that, yes, you're in a system that's unfair. So we've essentially changed the things. So, you know, when the, when the law tube community or, or and all the people out there saying everybody gets PR bonds, you know, in a manner of speaking, yes and no. I think that with my brethren, you know, are more the most important idea is public safety, right? Right. If you show me that you're not a danger, you're going to come back. We're going to let you out. But if you're going to be a knucklehead, then no. You know, I mean, really, yeah. And you can watch, you know, if you watch this, you see, you know, a lot of people get out, but a lot of people get put in jail because of that. Well, and that's interesting. That is one of the questions I was going to ask you because you did an article in Cron online. There was a thing that where you were saying one of your goals was to rectify the bail bond system. So yeah. I was going to ask you about that. So that's yeah, yeah we had we you did changed. yeah. Okay. Um, and, and it's and it's always just a, a work in progress, right? You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, neither was this. I mean, imagine you have a system that's been in place for 100 years, right? So you just don't upend and, and change it. And, you know, you there are a lot of people that are upset, a lot of people that are upset, a lot of people that still want to change it and want to bring it back to the way that it was because they're of the opinion that bail reform doesn't work. I don't agree with that. It is what it is. And so in the, in that same article, since we're, we're going there, um, you were also talking about, let's see, it, we should focus on why the person is on the docket in the first place. If we address these issues, then we can prevent people being on the docket, right? And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm yeah. wondering, uh, you know, about that, about, you know, helping people, right, before they get to court. 
Have you been able well, to? Well, I mean, that that's a little bit difficult. Before they get to court, I, I'm not going to see them, right? It's right. when they get to court, okay. finding out, why are you here? What's the problem? Why are you angry? You know, we get so many assault cases, it's ridiculous. Why are you angry? What's going on? Why are you upset? Do you have a drug issue? Okay, let's fix it. Let's see how we're, we're going to go from here. Um, so what we like to do is, you know, delve deeper into issues with people to see, hey, what can I do to make you better? I get so many kids that they haven't even graduated high school. God, we had a guy in there the other day who was, what, mid-40s? Can't read or write. So... I think that all these impacts people. And so we, you know, one by one systematically try to help every person and tailor um, a kind of a system that will help them. Now, of course, you have people that just, they don't care. They're not with it. They're going to, you know, young and they rule the world and, and, Now, in, in Bear County, Texas, they have the Reflejo Court for first-time violent offender, you know, that assault family members or whatever. Do you have anything like that in your county? We have different um, different types of courts for different types of, like, we have a mental health court that will help with issues with mental health. We have, um, let's see, we have a veterans court that helps those that are veterans that have issues. We also have courts that will help them. Um, I think little by little, we're, we are creating more. Um, we have so DWI Sober Court, which is a big, huge hit, where um, when we have people that truly have issues with sobriety, they are put into a, a, um, a treatment program where they are actually monitored by a judge. Um, it's kind of like a probation, but monitored by a judge to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and, and getting the treatment they're supposed to be getting. And, and it's more, we're not going to punish you when you mess up. That's not the idea. The idea is to figure out why did you do it? How can we help you going? How can we help you from here? So we don't just put you in jail and lock away the key. That's not the idea, you know? Which is, I mean, it's great to hear because I know a lot of people think that, police and the whole judicial system just wants to lock everyone up, right? That that's the goal. It's, yeah, it's, it's farther from the truth that can be, you know, it's, that's now remember we're in misdemeanor court, right? Over there. And, and a lot of the courts that you see over there in Bear County and in Jefferson, you know, you see felony courts, you see, you know, murders and, and, you know, we here, we're dealing with low level offenses. Okay. So, you are more likely to see more PR bonds with us than you are with the felony court or with, you know, the stuff that you see on Bear and in Jefferson. And, you know, those are very, very serious offenses. So you're not very likely to see as many PR bonds with them, you know. And that makes um, sense. total sense. Okay. But we, you know, we, we structure and have different courts to help those like, like I'm saying, you know, because that's the idea. Just we don't want to lock you up just to lock you up. No. We want to figure out what the issue is. Yeah, and I've I've heard you tell some some defendants, you know, you you seem like a smart person. You need to go out and get some education, you know. And I think it's really good for them to hear because they might not have ever been told that by anyone. So it, it's nice. To see. I, I you know I really you know I, there are some kids out there they just have no structure. You know, mom and dad are not there. Uh, they don't have any parental guidance. They don't have someone you know saying, "Hey, man, you're messing up." You know, and that's why I really, yeah, as much as they don't want to, I'm going to treat them like my child. I've got four great kids at home and then I have another 2,500 in court, you know, <laughs> and I really, truly, I'm going to, I talk to them as I'm my own kids. That's it. I'm really, I, I want everyone to succeed and they're going to one way or the other. That's it. I love that. And, you know, speaking of kids, let's talk about your family for a little bit um, and just hear about you as a person, um, because I know, you know, everyone wants to know all the judge questions, but I feel like a lot of people have asked those questions. Um, how did you meet your wife? 
That's interesting. My grandfather fell down the stairs. He broke his hip. So he gets into the ICU and my wife was the person that was taking care of him in the ICU. So I met her in the hospital as she was taking care of my grandfather. And, uh, you know, it, it initially it, it wasn't even me. It was my mom. You know, it's like the old, every Jewish mother, Hey, over there, over there. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, just butting into everything, getting it just like typical Jewish mother. Right. You know, and, and, um, kind of just hooked us up, you know, and she was just, she's like an angel, you know, just taking care of him. And, um, that's how we met. Um, but you know, me, uh, you know, I, I'm a chef by nature. That's what I like to do. I like to cook, right? That if, if you want to know anything about me, that's what I love to cook. You know, I, I, I like to experiment and cook and that's, that is one of my, you know, passions, but cooking for a living and for a ton of people, it, it's, you know, it's not. That's a stressful job. It was awful. Yeah. So I what's your favorite say, thing to cook? Uh, I like paella a lot. And I like to, I like, I like to experiment with Asian, a lot of Asian, you know, on Instagram, if you watch, you know, if you're on Instagram, like for me, at least I get so much like different Asian recipes where I'm working with noodles, oyster sauce, soy sauce, and, and, you know, ramen and making, um, um, I love to make dumplings, you know, it's great. So that's. So. That sounds wonderful. So do you cook at home or are you busy? At the oh, end yeah, of the yeah. Day? yeah, yeah. Every day. Do you yeah. really? Okay. Every day. My Every husband day. cooks too. And I love it because I, I don't like cooking. I don't, we have seven children and I still, oh. Yeah. And it's our 26 year homeschooling. So I have done a lot of the home things and we've reversed this year and it's been really interesting. Seven kids Seven. from Man, 12 to 35. Can you believe that? It's a, yeah, we have children in four decades and three generations. So yeah. Oh, moly. But, I, I give you a lot of credit. That's so much work, so much drama. Oof. It is a lot of, it is, you know, but I, I saw some pictures cause you know, I did some research um, before we did this interview and, and originally, you know, with our original four, you know, older ones, it, it just, it really reminded me you with the four, it's just, it's a beautiful time and people try to tell you to enjoy it. And I know sometimes it's hard when you're not sleeping and whatever, but it is parenting adult. It's not my favorite being the parent of it. I mean, I love them. Don't get me wrong, but I like knowing where they are and having them sleep in my own house. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. You know? and, and as you should, because, you know, when the cat's away, the mice will play, right? And if you're not constantly on them, they might veer the wrong way. And, and that's the fear that I have. So I try to keep them close and I, I want to be the party house. You know, I that want is, that's a secret my kids, right there. if they want to go out, have a good time. I, you know, I want them to come to me. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, I, I have a close relationship with my kids and I want their friends to be our friends so they feel comfortable hanging out with us and I'll make them food and, you know, and um, I want to be the party house where they all come over here. So I know what they're doing at all times. That is, it, it, that is the smartest thing and have a, a pool or, or a, a jacuzzi or something where they can come and hang out no matter what age they are and the food. That's the, that's the secret right there, you know, and knowing and having their friends know you have an open door. That is... You know, because there's so many parents now that don't want that. They just want them to get out. And so it's wonderful. That's that's a, just a beautiful thing to hear. That's really nice. I like that. So, so I, you know, another thing is I'm, a, I'm an avid video gamer. I'm a, I'm a big gamer, you know. So, you know, my son and I, we like to game a lot. You know, we have a couple video game machines. And, and so it's, friend, it's fun for my friends to come up, or not my friends, but his friends to come over, play video games, and do a lot of the things that they can't normally do at home, you know. So, oh yeah, you and my husband would get along really well. So, what do you guys like to do as a family? What fun things do you do? Obviously, video games, but outside, do you sports or? We like to go. You know, one of the big things that we like to do go to water parks. You know, um, last weekend we were at Kalahari. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but well, no. probably not because you live elsewhere. But it's uh, like an indoor water park here in Round Rock, which is about two two and a half hours away. Um, we also like to go to like Schlitterbahn, which is another one. And we go to Typhoon, Texas. So we like to go do things 
out and about and you know my my daughters are big actors right so they're in a lot of plays so we go watch them do their plays at the local community center and um you know my wife will also take them out to plays to go see like frozen um what's the other mean girls right because there's a couple plays that are coming in town here no soon and so um that's about it because you know one of our kids is a two-year-old so we're really um, with a two-year-old you're really um but there's not much because you got to be close to home because right. um they still nap he still naps so when we go out you know we're only out in a couple hours at a time it's not like we can take off for you know 12 hours and then come back home so well, speaking of family, you are first generation here, which I did not know until I started doing some research. And um, can you tell me a little bit about that? That Were you born here or were you born there? Yeah, yeah. I was right born here, right after, you know, my parents, my dad and my mother met in Chile. And my dad came here to work on a PhD. You know, my dad is a professor was or actually still is because he does an adjunct he's a professor at u of h chemical engineering oh wow um so he does that that they moved here for him to finish schooling with the intent of going back to chile but um i guess the, just the opportunity was too good they ended up staying here and um like right after here i came along and um you know once you once you had that baby that's it stuck so um but you know we still have some extended family that still live there so we go there every once in a while back to chile to visit oh that's um, nice but yeah we were there you know, probably just you know two three years ago so are you do you teach your kids spanish or uh they're not very willing to learn just like any kid so it's been difficult yeah. because they don't want to and I, I don't have the, I guess, wherewithal to just pound it into them. And I know I should, you know. But. They can learn when they get older, though. So, you know, that's okay. And I know well, before, you, before you got elected, you were talking about wanting to help the Latino community when you got elected as a judge. Are there some things that you've been able to accomplish in that, in that lane? Or? Um, what have we done? What do we and if do? the answer is no, I can edit this part out. Court. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> no, we've done well. What we've done more so with the courts is we've got a fresh start program where um, we basically we, it, it's the help that we do is just not limited to one portion of the community. It's it's to everyone. Um, we as a group, you know, the the judges and ours, we have done you know a fresh start program where we go into the community and help with expunctions and we help with just sealing records basically and um, different drives where they have basically little spots where any people who want jobs or want other different services that need it they can come get it and throughout the year we put those on um, to help the community um, i think the la the next one is actually coming up pretty soon and and i can i can show you a flyer and i can like give you a copy of it as well. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Then I can I can share it with everyone. And along that line, what are there any beliefs that you had about being a judge that have changed since you've been on the bench? Yeah, I, I think that probably the biggest thing is is the theory that I apply with my family. You know, I like to get along with people. I don't like to fight. I don't like the drama. And I, I, I like to be everybody's friend. But you can't do that with your kids, right? You can't do that with the court system. You know, if you try to be everybody's friend, then people are going to just take advantage of you. And when I first started out as a judge, I was trying to, you know, just be happy, be everybody's friend. And, and I think that it was, I got to take advantage of a lot. 
and you can't do that. Like when you have kids, you know, you have to be the parent. You got to know when to say no. You got to know when to say yes. You can't just say no all the time because that, that serves no purpose. You know, you have to say yes a lot, but you have to say no as well. And it's the same thing with the judge. I get people that try to take advantage all the time, you know, and just, and not defendants. I'm talking about attorneys. I'm talking, you know, I, where, you know, for example, you know, I, I'll have someone, they've never been to court before, right? And they're asking, a, someone will come up to me asking, hey, man, can we just waive the appearance? They don't have to be here, you know? And I don't know anything about the case. I, didn't, I don't know it's a first appearance and they don't tell me. And normally I would say, yeah, sure. You know, I, I guess we don't need him. And then I find out later, well, what, what, it's a first appearance. I haven't even heard probable cause. So, whereas, you know, we're required to do probable cause in every case, right? That's the initial setting where we find out what happened. Is there enough evidence to go forward? If there is, are you going to put any conditions on it? Something like that, you know? So, As much and as nice as you want to be, you have to be careful. You just can't be. And, and initially, you know, that was not my view. I wanted to, you know, and so you just can't, you can't be friends with everyone. You just got to. And I think that's, that's a lesson for everybody. And it, it's a painful one. You have to know when to be someone's friend and, and yeah. to really be the adult over that. Right. And it's, and it's hard. It's, it's, it's because. I don't like to fight with people. I don't like the drama. I don't need it. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. So when you're on the bench, you are very intense. And so some people, <laughs> you can be very intense. And so some people wonder, is this who David Flesher is all the time? And I think I've been watching you during this and it is, you do, you have, you have very strong, you are, I think it's maybe the part of the Latino like passion, right? Comes mm -hmm. out. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. No, it is. I'm, I'm, it's it's always. Yeah. I, it, my wife gets so mad at me because, she, why are you cross examining me? <laughs> it's, I'm that. I'm like yes, everywhere, at home too, and and I have to, you know, I have to be careful because I get passionate with everything that I do, and and every you know. If I believe something, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go for it, and I'm gonna put my all into it. And you know, um, I don't know. I've said this before. I, I don't. I no. I've not said it to you, but you know, in my first year in law school, in my first day in law school, um, we had a professor that was just great. Right? We used to make fun of him like crazy. So, you know, but he said something that was so smart. He says, "You know, look, you are gonna become a lawyer," and you're going to have a great time. You're going to love it, but you have to be careful. If you cannot turn it off, then you will be a very miserable and unhappy person. You'll be divorced because no one likes to argue with someone all the time, every time, and just constantly. It's nauseating. So um, you have to know when to turn it off, right? And so um, I'm passionate, and I sometimes am so to my detriment as well especially when I'm talking to my wife and she'll let me know about it. And, and she's right. And so I'll say, you know, look, I'm sorry. You know, I'm just, and she'll put me in my place and she's right because you just, you got to know when to stop. But the way you see me there, I'm, I'm like that everywhere. Don't matter where I am. So that was really good advice. I've got a, a soon to be daughter-in-law that is finishing up law school. And oh, do you, do you, thank you. Do you have any advice for people who are about to complete law school? Maybe want to become judges. What, what would you tell them knowing what you know now? Do your research, know who you're in front of, know when to stop. Don't throw all the shice at the wall and, and because it's not going to work. People see through that. Don't have your argument, be prepared. And for God's sakes, know when to turn the lawyering off because no one wants to be around a lawyer 24 seven. It's, it's, it sucks. You know, it sucks arguing. And, and, you know, I, I have friends that I, I've literally told them to, and 
you know, it's hasn't worked. But I mean, we all have faults. We all have, do things that are, you know, the idea is just to learn from it. Right? Do you ever want so to yell objection in your regular life? People are driving you crazy. All the time. <laughs> you know what I do though? I, I go outside on a run. I'm always pissed off. I'm always <laughs> upset. So I go exercise. That's how I deal with it. That's another good bit of advice. You have your own channel in the courtroom, which is unique because most of the judges don't. Do you feel that that takes any of your attention away from what's happening in the courtroom itself? No. I, no, I, I, I turn it on and then I go do my business. I, I just, I do it so that people can see and they can learn. And it's for, I, I don't gain anything from it. I don't get anything from it. I don't get paid. I don't get, I don't get any, there's no benefit from me, right? I do it for, so that transparency, education, so that people can see what we're doing, how we do it, in hopes that it will teach others not to do what they see others do. You know, we have, believe it or not, other teachers that have reached out to us to try to, um, what's it called? Uh, I guess put it into their classroom so they can watch it as an educational tool, which is fantastic. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the point. So others see how defendants act, the consequence of it, so that they won't make those same decisions. That's why I do it. And, 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 and I, does it help? I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully, I, I hope it does. It's like the same thing I do with every every um, person in our court. You know, I act the way that I do, and I do the way that I do, and our methodology so that they think before they speak, think before they act, so that they know what consequence will happen. So let's say someone gets arrested and they're going to go to court before you or somebody else. What advice would you give them on how to handle themselves in court? I can't give legal advice. Oh, well, that's true. You know, that would be, well, like, I don't mean, I don't mean legal, legal advice, advice, but like, well, just okay. behave, you know, it, you, it, you know, just if you've found yourself and you get charged with something, right? I would just go talk to a lawyer. I mean, you just, at the bottom, at, at the end of the day, you just, you know, I, I mean, I can't give legal advice, right? I, I'm not allowed to um, tell you how, what to do or how, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, if you do something where you end up getting charged, you, you got to go, I guess, talk to a lawyer, right? And try to work through it. Um, in hopes that, you know, you can, you know, better yourself. Sorry, I can't give you more. No, that's, you know what, that's okay. There's rules and we need to follow the rules. So that's okay. All right. And so before we go, cause I've kept you for a long time, do you have anything else that you'd like to let people know about yourself or court or life in general? No, I just, I, I, you know, I hope that if there are any teachers that are out there watching, I hope that they will, you know, let students know that they can watch and and learn and um i'm always happy to have you know students or teachers come to the courthouse because we do that every often or every year we have several classrooms that come into the courthouse into our actual courtroom and watch the proceedings and um i wish more of that happened but it's difficult i guess for kids to get out or get the permission to get out um but to me, I, that's the greatest benefit is reaching the young kids so they don't end up in jail or with criminal charges. And that's the idea. And that's, that's, my, that's my goal. And that's, I hope that is what happens. I think that's a perfect place to end. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.